أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته blessings and salutations on our beloved master Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we beseech Allah to bestow upon all the Sahaba, all the righteous companions of the Prophet Sallallahu to bestow his choicest blessings upon all of the Sahaba, the true superheroes and giants of Islam were those individuals who were selected by Allah to be in the company of our master, Rasulullah Sallallahu Kung Fu, Wu De Mingzhe, Ma Xia Wu, Kung Fu Di Nan Fei, Wu Lao Xi Nan Fei, Buddha Ma Xia Wu, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Er Ar Shan Shi Wu, Sahaba, Wu Ke Shu. Gaishi, Beitali, Huwaitsi, Hashakishu. On the 30th of September, after 10 years of traveling and research, this book was launched Kung Fu, My Journey, The History. If you're able to purchase a copy of this book after Jumwa today, it will be available, I think, at the entrance of the bookstore on this side over here. 20 rand of every copy purchased and sold today will be given back to Masjid Al-Quds. Today is the 17th of January, and today is the 17th Masjid across the province and the country where I have been given an opportunity to speak to the congregation. Now, I'm not a sheikh, I'm not an imam. I'm a Kung Fu champion, right? I've traveled across China, trained at the Shaolin Temple, and learned from the best grandmasters of Kung Fu in the world, not just in China. So what you will find in that book is three aspects. Number one, it tells the story, the first two chapters, of a young boy who grew up in Cape Town, born in the Boer Cup, and then as a result, of my mother being a white South African woman from German and Turkish descent. She committed, probably to the South African government, the apartheid government, she committed the greatest crime, and that was to marry a man of color, my father, an Indian man. So my mother, because she was classified as a white South African, she had acquired a property in Harfield Village in Claremont. And that was a whites-only area at the time. Please do not ask me for specific details because I was a baby and I cannot recollect. I was told this. And as a result of us living with my mother, the Group Areas Act separated us from her because it was a whites-only area and she was the only one allowed to stay there. And she then revoked her status as a white South African woman and she reunited with her family. And what the Group Areas Act did was they forcefully removed us from where we were, and we went to stay in Mitchell's Plain in Rocklands. And that is where I grew up for about seven and a half years of my life. So the first two chapters of the book Kung Fu tells the story of a young boy who came from humble beginnings, close-knit family of mixed race. You know, I'm proud of my mother's German and Turkish descent. Masoud Ozil is not the only one who has German blood in him. I'm proud that I have the same running through my veins. And importantly, from my father's side, my grandfather came from India, from Maharashtra province, way before my time. I was not afforded the opportunity to meet him because he passed away in the 1960s. But I believe he came to South Africa in 1909 by ship from India. So I'm consequently of mixed race, but I'm proudly South African, alhamdulillah. So it tells the story of this young boy who came from humble beginnings and then started Kung Fu training in Cape Town and then got an opportunity to go and live in China where I was trained at the Shaolin Temple 
and also going to Mount Hudang, where Tai Chi originated from, and then learning from some of the best masters in the world. Being then given an opportunity to represent my country on five amazing occasions and opportunities, and alhamdulillah, in the process, then becoming a five times gold medalist, legends of Kung Fu world champion. I hope that story motivates and inspires our youth, because that is what I've been speaking about for some months. Live your best life. Choose the opportunities that are being afforded to you and make the correct decisions. The greatest thing we can do is if we have been blessed to be a follower of our beloved master, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and to have been chosen to be in this period now. And if you are given an opportunity to be an ambassador of your country, so I'm a proud Pratia athlete, like a Hashim Amla, but my forte and my specialization is Kung Fu. So this year, inshallah, is the world championship in China and Malaysia, and I will do my very best to represent my country once again to the best of my capacity. I cannot promise gold once again, but I will do my best, inshallah. Bruce Lee says, do not attempt to forecast what the outcome of any engagement would be. And the engagement in this case would be this at the World Championship. So make dua, inshallah. So I want our youth to be motivated and inspired that we have the opportunity to deliver our best. Because I came from humble beginnings. This book is self-published. And I want to thank Cape Town and South Africa. To date, more than 1,680 copies have been sold. And it's not even in bookstores. So I want to thank Cape Town, Pretoria, Johannesburg, for supporting this book. And a lot of youth actually purchasing copies of this book. The units and how many copies we sell is not important. But I think it's the message. Our youth, we must understand and accept that you have that potential. It's that master that has nothing to do with Kung Fu. It's that master that dwells within. And you have the power to liberate that potential and that master. In doing so, live your best life. But in becoming that champion, what is the greatest aspect of becoming that champion is where you are on that world stage and you ascend that podium to be accorded the status of becoming a world champion to demonstrate the power of your example as a Muslim. That is important. Very, very important. In fact, that is more important than becoming that gold medalist. So not to sacrifice your ideals and maintain those principles. That's the first aspect of the book. The last chapter, my source of inspiration, is dedicated to my beloved mother, Salma Shafika. She passed away just over four months ago. On this blessed day of Jumu'ah, I beseech of the Almighty to grant her the highest stage in Jannah, inshallah. Jannah tul firdaus. And all of us, if we have lost a parent, an aunt, a sister, that we ask Allah to reunite us with him in the barzakh and in Jannah tul firdaus, inshallah. And the message is quite clear. Love, honor, respect all those women, particularly our mothers, that exist in our lives. If you are the fortunate one to still have your mother with you and you have not taken the time out to call her, to visit her, to spend that 10, 15 minutes with her, touch those hands, kiss those hands, kiss the forehead, touch the feet. That is the paradise that Allah has promised us. If we serve our mothers, I am not in that fortunate position anymore. So if you have your mother still with you and you haven't spoken to her, Make a point after this Jumu'ah that I will call her or go to her because Allah has promised us we have been created from the divine essence of the master of the universe. Yet Allah has chosen our mothers for that space, that darkness, different veils and levels of darkness in the womb to allow us to develop in the wombs of our mothers. Therefore, after Allah orders us to worship Him alone, we are told that we must be obedient to our parents, particularly our mothers. So may Allah afford us, if we are fortunate, still to have that mother with us, that we serve her. We honor her, respect her. Because it was not the king, not the emperor, not the president. Allah chose our mothers to carry us for nine months. And it's the mother who Allah allows 
to nurture, look after. And from that womb comes the Kung Fu champion, comes the cricket star, comes the football champion, comes the president, comes the emperor, comes the king, comes the queen. It is our mother. So that's the message. And right in the center of the book, those names that I've mentioned in Mandarin and Cantonese, Hu Ke Su, Hu Wei Si, Hasha Ke Su, Gei Si, Bei Tali, the names of five companions of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, archived in China. If you're looking for political answers, you're not going to find it in my book. The book is a source of inspiration for our youth, preserve the history as is found in the book. If you're looking for political answers, unfortunately, I can't give you that. You need to speak to government officials about that. I'm a national athlete of my country. I have a responsibility towards my country. But that history, these names, who are these Sahaba? Right on top, the Chinese Muslims regard Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu an as the father who brought Islam to China. So that is the first name that you will find archived in China. Wu Keshu, Sa'ad, Abu Waqas. Recorded that he visited China on no less than two diplomatic missions, twice. One, immediately after the first flight to Abyssinia. The spokesperson appointed during that first flight was Jafar bin Abi Talib, the older brother of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh. And they then left from the east coast of Africa. This was around 614, 615. And everything I say is found in this book. It's a self-published book. I've not been funded by government or any other government institution. You know, I'm not being paid by anyone. It's like my career, right? I didn't get these big endorsements and sponsorships. I worked hard, scrapped, was about to give up on this career more than a thousand times. But yet I relentlessly pursued this goal and this dream that I had to represent my country. So I owe no allegiance to any government. I owe my allegiance to Allah Rasulullah and humanity because we are all children of humanity because our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent with a universal diplomatic mission and therefore close to 1.7 billion muslims are found scattered across the globe all coming from different cultures traditions different ways of life but all united under the obedience of Allah and knowing that our complete and foremost role model is our master, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, 615. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, Jafar bin Abi Talib, from the Gulf of Aden to the Bay of Bengal by sea, obviously. From the Bay of Bengal to the Andaman Sea, from the Andaman Sea to the South China Sea. They entered China through the south, Guangzhou, Hanzhou. The seat of power at that time in China, King of Wu, the leader and the emperor of China, Li Shi Min, Tai Zhong, he was the father, meeting Sa'ad and Jafar. And they explained this message of Islam in his imperial court. He was so taken by this message. Do not leave Masjid al Quds after Jumu'ah saying that MJ gave us the information that the Chinese emperor probably became a Muslim. No, there's no validation to that point. What he listened to was the message that Sa'ad and Jafar had come with. And he was so captivated by this message of Islam. And he then likened it, just a comparison. I'm not saying Confucius and Kung Fu Zi, just a comparison. He likened the message to that of the teachings of Kung Fu Zi, Confucius. Justice, equity, good morals, values, ethics, good governance, accountability. And what struck him most was that Sa'ad and Jafar, the manner in which they demonstrated the example of our master, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even in the imperial court of the king of Wu. And when they heard about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the last and final messenger, they gave him the name Buddha Ma Khia Hu, the chosen last messenger. Has nothing to do with Buddhism. Buddha just means chosen one. The last prophet from Arabia. So, Li Shi Min, 
Taijong, he wanted to honor Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Saad. And he wanted to do, obviously build a statue in his honor. And they eventually reached consensus, build a place of worship. Therefore, if you go to China, you will find Hua Yixing. Remembering the sage, it is the oldest masjid in China. In fact, let's take it a few steps further. It's not just the oldest masjid in China. Outside of Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem, in the entire east, the oldest masjid outside of these precincts is in China. This masjid, Hua Yixing, built before 627. It is a local provincial and national heritage site. The building of the masjid was commissioned by Li Ximin, by Taizong. And this masjid was erected before 627. Now, after the first diplomatic mission, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas was back in Arabia because we know that Sa'ad participated in every single one of the expeditions and campaigns as led by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So he was back in China at the time before the Battle of Badr took place, right? Second diplomatic mission. During the Khilafah of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an, he was expanding the Islamic territories eastwards. And as a result, they called Sa'ad, the great general. There's one chapter devoted in the book to Sa'ad. And this history, everything I say to you is just taken directly from the book. So therefore, purchase a copy of the book after Jumu'ah. Second diplomatic mission, shortly after 650, but they traveled across land. How many of us here have brothers from Bangladesh who have a little supermarket, a super or cafe in our areas? Plenty of you. Did we think of asking them about the masjid that is in Bangladesh that is known as the Abu Akas Masjid? Did we think about asking them that? Because shortly after 650, the second diplomatic mission back to China, as instructed by Amir al-Mu'minin, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anh, they traveled across, across land. And Sa'ad then stopped off in Bangladesh. And this masjid was then built by him. And therefore, it is known as the Abu Akas Masjid. Subhanallah. The real superheroes. The real leaders. Because they understood the universal diplomatic mission of our master, sallallahu alayhi wa And therefore, if you meet Chinese Muslims... And I have witnessed this, and I've men mentioned it so many times. Today's the 17th Masjid at Jumu'ah that I've been given the opportunity to speak. And no coincidence, it's the 17th of January uh, as well. And I've mentioned this on so many occasions. The Chinese Muslims have such a deep love for Rasulullah. If you mention Prophet Muhammad, and they are sitting, they will stand, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they will drop their heads in honor and respect of our Master. And they will remain silent and not speak. For a short period of time and then sit down. And it doesn't stop there. You mention the names of any one of these Sahaba. They will immediately say, Radiallahu an, and also stand if they're sitting. And give the Sahaba the due accord and respect. So the second diplomatic mission, Tai Zhong Li Shi Min had passed away already. But King of Wu, the Tang dynasty was ruled by the son now, Gao Zhong. And he remembered the relationship forged between Sa'ad as an emissary of the Islamic empire and his father. And they just extended and continued with that relationship. So the sum total of all of that, I need to get to the Kung Fu because I know time is limited. Subhanallah. The sum total of all of that is Xinjiang, the northwest province. You will find that there are no less than 24,000 masajid in that province alone. A census was conducted at the end of 2017. You will find no less than 27 million Muslims in that province alone. Uyghur or Uyghur Muslims. Strong in Islam. Originally, East Turkestan. Long time ago. And across the mainland, you will find that when I managed to perform Eid Salah at the Wuxi Masjid in Shanghai in 2009 at the World Championship, went for Eid Salah to this tiny little masjid. And speaking to the uh, Khoi Muslim uh, Chinese Imam, he then told me, no, the Muslim population then already was 100 million across China. Subhanallah. Not 20 million, not 25 million, not 30 million. So when, on, in March, inshallah, I'll be taking a South African group to China on the first ever cultural and Islamic tour where they will visit this oldest masjid, Khua Yixing. And also visit the Abu Waqas Memorial Park, another provincial heritage site. Do you know how many streets 
avenues, boulevards, and buildings are named in honor of Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas in the south of China? Subhanallah. We must go there and actually see and find out. Because many would say China remains a mystery and an enigma. Go there. Maybe you should accompany me and you see exactly what it's like. I lived in this country for seven years. So Islam then, the seed of Islam was planted. So it was an Arab, or Turk, Farsi, or Muslims from Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, who then married Han women, and this produced the largest of China's 56 ethnicities, Khoi. And amongst all the ethnicities, at least seven are classified as Muslims. Khoi, Uga or Uyghur, Tajik, Turkic, Uzbek, Kazakh, Bonan, all Muslims in China. When I come back, inshallah, at the end of March from China, I will give you the updated stat as to what the population is like, because I'm giving you something 10, 11 years ago, right? And how many masajid will you find across the mainland of China? If there are 24,000 in Xinjiang, you will find that there are no less than 42,000 masajid scattered across China. And some of the beauty, most beautiful and oldest masajid in the world, Songjian, Nuji, Idga, in the north, beautiful, hundreds of years old, built either before the Song Dynasty, Grand Mosque of Xi'an, Tang Dynasty, Ming Dynasty. That's when the building of masajid and Islamic institutions started to flourish. Now getting to the Kung Fu, about 800 years ago, more or less, a general from Xinjiang, East Turkic warrior, Cha Shanmir, Arabic name, Zamir, developed his own style of Kung Fu. Now, you know Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, MJ Lee, we promote Kung Fu, right? But Cha Shanmir developed his own style of Kung Fu, like you get the Mantis and the Eagle and the Shaolin and Tai Chi, all different styles. He developed his own style. Cha Chuan and the style became the most popular style of Kung Fu in the North. How did they teach the style of Kung Fu to their children? This is the genius part of it. In the courtyard of every masjid, Kung Fu training used to take place and still does two hours before Fajr. The Imam of the masjid, master of Kung Fu. And he goes out in tradition across his village, city, province, looking for worthy disciples, those with good character. Gets the permission of their parents and, and family and they then stay with him for 10 years. And in that 10-year period, they become masters of Kung Fu, Hafid of Quran. They also memorize the Siha Sitta. After that 10-year period, they are sent back to their villages. And they continue this tradition. We should view the institution of the masjid as our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam in Yathri bin Medina. It was not just a place of worship. Because the Khoi Muslims have kept that example of our master alive in their masajid. Every courtyard of the masjid in China is used for Kung Fu training. So Medina, as we know, Masjid al-Nabawi, not just Salah. Education, propagation, service and compassion, prayer and devotion, social welfare, and importantly, the courtyard of the masjid in Medina was used specifically for sword play, spear play, wrestling, archery, running. And the Prophet ﷺ not only encouraged it, but he himself was active in it. So to get our youth Back in the masjid, I believe we should use that dimension. And maybe we can use the dimension of Kung Fu for that purpose. Get our youth into the masjid. The Khoi Muslims, galaxy of masters of Kung Fu. Right? So Cha Shan Mir developed this style. Alif, like this, it was taught to the children in the courtyard of the masjid. Alif, ha, ba, ha, ha, ta, ha, 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 tha, ha, 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 ha. Two hours before Fajr. And of the greatest grandmasters of Kung Fu in China, they were Khoi Muslims, deeply religious practicing Muslims. And that tradition still carries on today. It influenced me, and therefore I can stand in front of my respected brothers and sisters in Cape Town and South Africa as a Kung Fu champion. Wang Ziping, lion of Chinese Kung Fu, 50 years undefeated Muslim. Ma Feng Tu, first full contact champion in 1915. Muslim. Ma Ying Tu, his brother, also national champion. Way before Jet Li and Bruce Lee. Man, we must know. Jet Li, Li Lian Ji, he was mentored for two years by a, a Khoi Muslim. 
grandmaster of Kung Fu. Ma, Sianda, Ma is short for Muhammad or Mahmoud. We are running out of time. This is the legacy. And I'm hoping this book, inshallah, allows us to preserve this legacy and history. In April, I'll be taking a squad of uh, youth to mainland China for training at the Shaolin Temple. And thereafter, some of my senior students will compete in Hong Kong. We want the youth to take up the practice of the Kung Fu. We want them to come back to the masjid. And they must be eagerly at the masjid awaiting perhaps Kung Fu training or martial arts training. Let's revive that example of Rasulullah as demonstrated by the Chinese Muslims.